Good day. My name is Jairi M. Lozana, and I'll be discussing the three major topics that I learned under chapters 1 to 6. So the first topic that I'll be discussing is about managing test anxieties. I know this sounds familiar because almost all of us have experienced anxiety, pressure, and extreme stress during our examinations or tests. So this is under chapter 1, Summative Assessment 1. This is under the planning and implementing examinations or assessments. So we have to first um, discuss what test anxiety is as an introduction. It is a psychological condition in which people experience extreme distress and anxiety in testing situations. While many people can experience some degree of stress and anxiety before and during exams, test anxiety can actually impair learning and hurt test performance. So we need to learn how to cope up so that whatever stress that we are dealing while taking the examinations, it won't impair our learning and our growth in our academic life. So let's proceed to any potential causes of why test anxiety happens to students. Number one is the fear of failure. Most students connect their sense of self-worth with their test scores. The pressure that you put on yourself once that you fail the exam can really have a detrimental effect on your whole um, well-being. So tip of advice is that you don't connect your self-worth to your successes and achievements in life as well as your failures and setbacks. You should really gain that um, self-confidence and gain um, that sense of self-worth that comes from within and not from external sources such as our life achievements. Second would be the poor testing um, history. So if you have done poorly on tests before, either because you didn't study well or because you were so anxious you couldn't remember the answers, this can cause even more anxiety and a negative attitude every time you have to take another test. For example, you've taken your first examination and then you failed and then you um, some sort of feel more pressured because you are given another chance by your teacher. Let's say you are given a remedial assessment or a remedial exam. So you, ha you now have a greater um, stress because that would mean that it is your last time to, to, to pass the test. So you really have to um, be determined to pass it. So it really is can be stressful under that um, situation. Third would be unpreparedness. So if a student didn't study well, um, or let's say there has been a lot of um, circumstances that cost him or her not to um, study well enough, this can add to the feeling of anxiety. So how can we mitigate test anxiety? How can we lessen the chances that a student will experience such. First would be to give students feedback on their performance to help them realize the assessment will foster further learning or the mastery or the goal orientation. So we have to re um, remind the students that our examinations does not um, intend to impair them or to um, hurt their feelings in the first place, but to encourage them and to help them um, learn, to help them see and assess where they have failed and where they can develop. Second would be to arrange test items from easy to hard. This is so the students will be motivated answering the easy ones first and then they get to escalate to solving the harder problems. Third would be to give pl plenty of time to complete the assessment. But of course, it shouldn't be too much. But we have to give an ample amount of time for students to complete their tests. Fourth would be to minimize interruption and other distractions. That's why examinations should be done in a quiet place, in a formal setting, or in a um, somewhere that would um, ease the tension to the students. It would be a distraction-free place. Now, if it's done in a classroom, it should be an environment wherein there wouldn't be any excess noise. Fifth would be to avoid threatening students if they do poorly. So we shouldn't scare students. Instead, we should encourage them to do their best so that they'll be motivated to learn and to take the exams with confidence. Sixth is to avoid unreal unrealistically high expectations or expecting perfect performance. Now, nobody is perfect. 
Um, there are some students who would get perfect scores during examinations, but there are also students who wouldn't. So we teachers should be more understanding and would not raise any unrealistically high standards. Seventh is to avoid severely negative consequences if students perform poorly. We need to help them and build them instead of um, destroy them whenever they fail. Eighth is to provide students with a test blueprint or outline of the assessment. This can be helpful so that the students would know what to expect and um, how to manage the questions and how to provide answers as well. Ninth is to avoid walking around the room looking over students' shoulders. So I know this is very common to teachers, but it, this can cause extreme stress to other students who are um, uncomfortable with people looking at their answers. And I'm one um, of that type of students. So tenth is to avoid making comparisons with other students. You shouldn't compare. It's a big no-no to compare this student with this student. You need to um, learn that each learner is different and unique and diverse in their own way. Eleventh is to provide optional retesting. We need to assure the students that there would be um, retesting if ever they fail, they're given another chance for them to um, prove that they deserve a passing grade. Now, to give two examples, number one, the, ch the teacher or the instructor, the educator um, should be understanding with the students because each learner has his own pace. This doesn't mean that we are allowing them to slack off, but it is that the educator should guide and l and allow the students to learn in the most effective learning style that they have. Second, this is for the students. They should communicate with the teacher well and to do their part so anxieties and pressure can be effectively managed. Doing their part means studying well enough, doing their best, and not staying up too late so that it wouldn't affect their performance. So that would be all for topic number one. It is managing test anxieties. I hope this information helped you, um, even if you're a teacher or a student. So God bless everyone.